Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news report today, Monday, February 4th, 2013. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. And um, as far as the headlines and links go, I had some problems, some issues Thursday, really Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with, uh, with internet and being able to upload. So I'm just lucky to be able to upload at this particular point. So I can't guarantee the links will be posted. But I'll definitely try. It says, for the first time, most Americans believe federal government threatens personal freedoms. Distrust of the U.S. government has reached an all-time high among Americans, a majority of whom now say Washington represents a threat to their personal freedoms. This is according to a new poll by Pew. 53% of respondents said the federal government threatens their own personal rights and freedoms. Those disagreeing numbered at 43%. The percentage of those viewing the government as a threat represents a six-point increase from nearly three years ago when 47% they felt that way, said, and a 23% jump from November 2001 when Americans rallied around their government following the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. Rise in federal prison population is unprecedented. Since the early 1980s, there has been a historically unprecedented increase in the federal prison population, a new report from the Congressional Research Services observes. The number of inmates under the Bureau of Prisons jurisdiction has increased from approximately 25,000 in 1980 to nearly 219,000 in 2012. It shows that the growing proportion of inmates are being incarcerated for immigration and weapons-related offenses, but the largest portion of newly admitted uh, inmates are being incarcerated for non, you know, drug offenses, which is, you know, uh, where's the victim, right? Georgia police acquired $200 million worth of military-grade vehicles and weapons through the Department of Defense. Some 600 police departments and sheriff's offices in Georgia have joined the many law enforcement agencies nationwide using military-grade equipment, once again raising concerns around local law enforcement's need for such heavy-duty weaponry. As a report in 2011, I don't know if you guys remember this, the Pentagon gives away military equipment to law enforcement agencies under the 1033 program, in addition to military robots provided by the DOD, police use of armored surveillance vehicles provided for nearly nothing by corporations, law enforcement use of tanks and armed personal carriers and drones. Georgia's Department of Public Safety, the military equipment and weaponry owned by law enforcement agencies in the state is worth some $200 million, some of which is possessed by tiny departments with less than 20 officers. So I guess uh, Jesse Jackson is calling on Obama to uh, address gun violence. Well, how is he going to address gun violence? Well, let's see. What's the usual? More cops, right? That's what you have. Mayor moves 200 Chicago cops from the desk to the streets. So move follows recommendation made last week by inspector general but it goes on here and it says that when the president shows up it shows ultimate national seriousness at jackson he also called for the u.s department of homeland security to help patrol the streets of chicago marines sailors uh, to invade jasper county for training mission it says says about 150 marines and sailors will hold realistic urban training that means scaring the shit out of unsuspecting population in Jasper County later this week as part of pre-deployment training, the 26th MU will train with Ridgeland town limits Thursday through Saturday. It says the t times and exact locations for the training are not to be announced according so, so that they can scare the shit out of people and carry out this realistic urban training. The training could take place at any time during those days, they said. Residents will likely see or hear military vehicles and possibly see aircraft. The Marines and sailors likely will be stationed on ships, and the training is part of certification for deployment to Mediterranean and African shores. So they're really, really boasting about this Africa and African um, uh, deployments and stuff like that. But also what? It could be used for the American people. So participants will be in uniform, carry weapons. Some exercises will take place at night, and residents might hear a popping sounds as Marines fire blanks. The blanks do not pose a hazard for residents. Funny, this used to be my home for about five years, uh, Buford, South Carolina. Drones to watch over U.S. highways. So let's not forget, the tw remember, there's a 25 or no, 35, uh, uh, there are going to be troops from, army troops going to 35 African nations as well, deploying. So that's kind of the background. Drones to watch over U.S. highways. Drones could help human workers, sa remember safety, drones are going to help for safety. Uh, safeguard the 4 million miles of U.S. highways crisscrossing the country. Flying robots can inspect bridges and roads. 
that uh, people, you know, they can't, the government can't even pay for. Survey lands with laser mapping and even alert officials to traffic jams or accidents. You know, that's why we got all those cameras out there, too. This is part of the step by the FAA uh, to open up U.S. civilian airspace to drones by 2015. Many drones, we've seen many of these little videos that are on YouTube, uh, you know, in the development stage. But then you have Army deploys tiny helicopters, a tiny uh, remote control helicopters being used for surveillance, i.e. spying on the front line to detect enemy threats to British troops. These things are kind of spooky, man, when you see them like flying in uh, droves, uh, like 10 of them, and they all move uh, in sync. They can go through windows and doors. Then you have uh, an exclusive investigation by this news local affiliate, a Humvee for a school, says January 31st, billions of your tax dollars have been spent on excess stuff the U.S. military has given away, weapons of war ending up in Chicago and the suburbs far away from the battlefield. Since June 2012, Illinois officials have tried to block the release of information they've requested concerning high-powered automatic weapons, armored battlefield vehicles, and combat helicopters. It's all equipment taxpayers paid for that is just being given away to local governments here and across the country. From this Humvee now deployed at the Catholic Benedictine University in Lyle to Brookfield Zoo's arsenal of automatic combat rifles, anything goes from overstocked Pentagon. Campus police transformed the Humvee to a mobile command center to protect 6,500 student campus. Uh, it gives the community a sense that they're dealing with a professional political law enforcement agency, says Salatino. We have a school district that wants to claim ownership of any work created by students and teachers in the Washington Post. Proposal by Prince George County Board of Education to copyright work created by staff and students for school could mean that a picture drawn by a first grader, a lesson plan developed by a teacher, or an app created by a teen would belong to the school system and not the individual. So it says that the measure has some worry that the system claiming ownership to the work of others, creativity could be stifled and there would be little incentive to come up with innovative ways to educate students. There's something inherently wrong with this, says the education activist. It says there are better ways to do this than take away a person's rights. It says if the policy is approved, the county would become the only jurisdiction in Washington region or in the Washington region where the school board assumes ownership of work done by the school system staff and students. Then we have Supreme Court to consider if silence can be evidence of guilt. This is actually no, January 11th. I've been holding on to this article. I wanted to get to it. Supreme Court on Friday agreed that uh, agreed to consider whether a suspect's refusal to answer police questions prior to being arrested and read his rights can be introduced as evidence of guilt at a subsequent murder trial. That's uh, interesting, too, because um, the guy, the uh, vet who supposedly killed uh, the Navy SEAL, uh, actually, there's no, there was no mention of him being represented by any uh, uh, a lawyer or anything like that, that they just basically had to tase the guy. Then you have divorce cases could be settled by Sharia and religious courts after a landmark high court ruling over Jewish couples dispute, a settlement of a Jewish couple approved under uh, rabbinical law. First time English family judge has sent divorce dispute to religious court. The Muslim Council of Britain praised the judgment with the spokesman telling the Times if it leads to the eventual acceptance of Sharia court divorces, then Muslims will be very encouraged. So we'll see, right? Then you have poor people pay more for car insurance, study finds. Even with worse driving records, wealthier people, people have been quoted lower rates. The country's la largest auto insurers often charge safe drivers more money for their annual insurance premiums than their more reckless counterparts, according to a study released on Monday by the Consumer Federation of America. Even if they have better driving records, researchers found that drivers in lower and middle income brackets were changed charge higher premiums than well-to-do drivers in 66% of the cases studied. Greek finance minister receives a bullet and a death threat in the mail. So the finance minister in Greece has been sent a bullet and death threat from a group of protesting against home foreclosures in the recession-hit country. January 14th, unknown assailants carried out a gunshot assault of the office of the Greek prime minister at the headquarters of his ruling New Democracy Party in Athens. And we have U.S. We're going to switch here gears. U.S. approved Israeli bombing of Syria and may join the war at any moment, despite the pretense that the U.S. and Israel are not intervening in Syria's civil war. They were both at war with Syria. Israel claims it bombed, it bombed a weapons convoy while Syria claimed that a research facility was hit. So it says who is right? It says both. The Time reports 
uh, that Israeli warplanes struck several targets inside Syria overnight Tuesday, including Biological Weapons Research Center. That was flat, not a concern that it might fall into the hands of Islamists. Uh, but it goes on here, it says, the irony is thick as the U.S. is directly backing the Islamic extremists fighting to topple the Syrian government. So time went on and it says that there was also two additional targets that were hit the same night without offering details. They also said that Israel had a green light from Washington to launch yet more such strikes. So it says that U.S. may actually directly join in on the action. It says one Western intelligence official told Time the U.S. military was poised to carry out similar airstrikes around Aleppo if rebels threatened to take actions associated with the weapons of uh, basically chemical weapons in the region. With U.S. approval, Israel plans Syria escalation. It says the new plan calls for ground invasion, occupation of buffer zone. Few things seem to get Israeli officials planning as quickly as the U.S. Uh, to launch an attack in Prop 2. It says, having been given the green light not just for Wednesday's attacks, but for other future attacks, Israel is now said to be planning dramatic escalation. Under the new uh, consideration by its leadership, the plan calls for additional strikes inside Syria, but a full-scale ground invasion across the Purple Line, seizing a 10-mile buffer zone on the other side of the line in which to install large numbers of Israeli troops and tanks. They say it's the buffer zone is likely to be far more controversial and potentially explosive since Israel has already had a de facto 10-mile buffer zone since 1967 in the Golan Heights. The past 50 years, Israel's filled this zone with 20,000 settlers, and the new zone would inevitably look like another land grab, so Israeli expansion. President Assad accuses Israel of destabilizing Syria. So it says Assad has accused Israel of trying to destabilize his country. It was his first remarks on last week's reported Israeli airstrikes in Syria. I'm trying to look for a quote. It goes on and says that uh, Barack told security conference in Germany on Sunday that the strike was proof that when we say something, we mean it. We don't think Syria should be allowed to bring advanced weapons systems into Lebanon. Assad said on Sunday that the last Wednesday's uh, raid unmasked the true role Israel is playing as a desperate bid is what it was in collaboration with foreign enemy forces and their agents on Syrian soil to destabilize and weaken Syria. That's right, their foreign mercenaries aren't helping enough. It says the airstrike has strengthened Assad's regional credentials as the standard bearer of Arab defiance to Israel. Talking about the red line to Zionist Israel. Then from Global Research, go check it out, the link. Uh, when Zionists and jihadists join hands, Syria accuses Israel of supporting al nasr rebels. Foreign and expatriates uh, ministry sent papers to the UN Security Council on the Israeli attack which targeted the scientific research center in Damascus countryside. I'm going to keep moving for time's sake. Syrian opposition reiterates willingness for talks with the Assad government. I think, of course, the actual opposition, the, the rebels and mercenaries, or both, are actually not in agreement with this guy, who I think is actually a leader, or he worked with oil companies. The leader of the foreign-backed Syrian opposition coalition has once again expressed readiness for holding dialogue with the government of Assad. Yeah, that's right. U.S. created Syrian opposition led by big oil rep. So as in Libya, Syrian opposition is led by longtime servants of Western corporate financiers. So he was a longtime U.S. resident, taught at the University of Alabama, and formerly employed by the Petroleum Institute based in uh, Abu Dhabi. He, he was also and sponsored by uh, British Petroleum, Shell's, uh, Shell and France's Total, the Japan Oil Development, and much others. So. So maybe they're just ready to accept Assad being there, but it says either way, Qatar's agenda in Syria, which is what? Uh, uh, oil pipeline, that's what they want. Qatar continues to funnel weapons and facilitate other resist assistance to Syrian rebels and Salafi jihadists fighting the Assad regime in Syria. Before the destabilization by the West, Iran had cut a deal with Iraq for an Iran-Iraq-Syria pipeline to pump natural gas from the world's largest gas field. Qatar could not allow this to happen. Qatar's original plan was a pipeline from South Pars through Iraq onto Turkey and then to European markets. So the plot thickens, huh? Atianu tells America it's now or never so the ticking bomb. You draw the line in the sand, but this time it's for the U.S. Talking about Iran. Obama green light for Israel to strike Iranian Syrian Hezbollah military links like we just covered another source. And we'll skip Mali. We'll cover that tomorrow. South Korea and U.S. troops begin drills amid signs of impending North Korean nuclear tests. Actually, the U.S. wants to have them do a nuclear test so they can see what they got. North Korea imposes martial law and orders troops to be ready for war. Russia's forces are ready for war, says their army chief.
China prepares the People's Liberation Army for war. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.